All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for some amateur championships. Please welcome, making his way to the cage, the challenger, Brian Heathcock. Well, it's not Brent Heathcock. That fight has been scrapped. This is Julius Walker coming. This is for the 205-pound uh, light heavyweight championship. Julius Walker with a record of four and one, coming out of Team Fusion in Springfield, Missouri. Now I know this team, this the, the, the coaches and the team here. These guys are highly trained and they know what they're doing. And this will be an exciting fight. Yeah, Julius believes in this fight he'll bring speed, height, and length compared to Overvig. He's got a four-inch advantage. Oh yeah, no, he's definitely he's definitely a big a big guy. I mean, like I said, I was standing next to these guys. I'm six two, and and I I kind of felt small. I mean, <laughs> short. I'm still like I said, a thicky thick. Making his way in the blue corner, Julius Walker. There's the adjustment, Julius Walker. Julius wants to push the pace in this fight, jab his face off, and stay at his own range. I don't know if you can jab a face off, but I think we know what he means. He's gonna definitely look to keep this fight on his feet. And that was the bullet making his way to the NFA cage, Tristan Overvig. <laughs> Tristan Overvig, this guy is a big, big, thick man. He is known, as you had said, for his jiu-jitsu skills, so he's clearly gonna look to try to get this down on the ground. He just won adult pants at Blue Belt in his division for no gi. Got promoted on the podium to Purple Belt. Trains at Pedago Submission Fighting. He's affiliated with them, but he trains directly under Chad Hawkins in Effingham, Illinois. He's currently on a four-fight winning streak, and he's gonna look to wrestle, and he believes his wrestling and jiu-jitsu can't be matched by what Julius Walker has. And if you look at Tristan's physique, he's, a, he's not as tall, he's a little bit shorter, but he's loaded, you can tell he's loaded with power. He says he's gotten bigger, a little bit stronger, but he's still just as fast. He has that record of nine and one. He's looking to bring that title belt home, as this is for the NFA Light Heavyweight Championship. The big thing is gonna be if he can tie his strikes and level changes into shooting on it. Because if you know a guy is only looking for a takedown, he can still take you down if he's that good. But if you're an athletic guy like Julius Walker, you should be able to, have to mix it up to get him down. Julius Walker with the stare down. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is scheduled for three three minute rounds for the NFA Light Heavyweight Championship. Brought to you tonight by HKA USA. And now, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This ninja ship fighter stands six foot four, weighing in 206 pounds. Goes an amateur record for wins, one defeat. Representing Team Fusion and fighting out of Springfield, Missouri, Julius Juice Box Walker. This moment across the cage, fighting out of the red corner is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu specialist standing six foot tall, weighing in 205 pounds. Goes an amateur record, nine wins, one defeat. Representing Pentagon Submission Fighting and fighting out of Effingham, Illinois, Tristan. Your reference track to the action, Zed Tigris. Tristan's got a crowd here with him tonight, but Julius Juicebox does not care. He's coming out to make a statement. Here we Touching go. The gloves. I think he's going to look to jab that face off. Oh, looks for an uppercut. Nice left hook Caught right here. This is the plan. Tristan wants to try to close that gap. Nice, nice knee. Ooh, nice couple. shot to the body. Looks the invert. Wow, Julius, we wonder what a game plan. Defense, take down defense. There he goes. He's a separate here. Don't play he that game. He needs to stay though. calm, though. Julius needs to stay calm. Tristan slipped right in. Ooh, there's a cut right on Tristan. It looks like his right eyebrow. Julius needs to dig that forehead under his chin and keep Tristan tall. Because if you start letting Tristan get his hips lower than your hips, his head below your head, he's going to start winning that fight. Nice he's almost got Tristan. him on his toes here. That's what you want. Yeah. 
Julius has a good game plan here. He looks like he's staying calm, composed. Tristan goes for that double underhook. Well, one, one, one under, one over. Hard to see where we're at. Julius throwing those knees right there, trying to just pepper those shots. And he seems to turn him around. Yeah, Tristan was looking for kind of like a lat drop, a little bit of a, almost like a momentum throw, like a judo throw, like he had right away that first time. But Julius had the answer with that defense, got right back to his feet. Now what Julius doesn't want here is him to get his hands clasped. He gets his hands clasped under his butt, he's gonna be able to lift him up. So he's keeping him wide here, picked him back up. Julius, is look, he, he, he's, he looks pretty smart. He's got a game plan. Tristan is cut. Yeah, Tristan got cut on his eyebrow with a couple of those big shots. Now, what I want, what I want to know is like, whose gas tank is going to last? Because this right here, I, I think that's a bad idea by yeah, Julius. Unless he's using to set up a strike. Julius needs to get back to that jab. Jab that face. Nice right hand. Oh, oh. big right hand out of Tristan. No effect on Julius whatsoever. See here, if you if you look though, you said it earlier, Tristan is breathing out of his mouth. His mouth guard is sagging low. Julius, nice right hand. Knee to the body, those body shots. Oh, left hook, right hand. Julius staying away. Big right hand great, and he right steps in, point. looks for that uppercut. Right here, Julius doing a great job with the takedown defense. He needs to stay calm. Let Tristan almost, uh, you know, exert his energy, go for that takedown. His hands are not locked. He's got his, his, his hips are wide. That's what you need. He switches to that single leg. It's you know, tricky to take out. tall guys down like that. It oh, is. But he wow. Got he there went we for a ride right there with just 17 seconds left. Tristan's going to need to do something to try to steal this round. 10 seconds left. I think Julius might get out of it. Those body shots. I don't. Two, one. I don't think that's enough to steal the round. That was a heck of a first round for Julius Walker. The last uh, 15 seconds or so with a big slam, I don't think was enough to take the round. What do you think, Jordan? No, midway through the round, maybe even a minute left, it could have been enough to steal it. But I don't think that was enough. Yeah, I think I think Julius did a great job with taking on defense, landed some big, 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 big shots. He ate a, a big right hand out of from Tristan, but I, I have to give that first round to uh, to Julius. We're on now to round number two in this NFA Light Heavyweight Championship brought to you tonight by HKA USA. Make sure you guys visit their booth here tonight. HKA Custom Boxing Gloves and Gear. We can customize them and take your, to your boxing gym, team, or fight promotion to the next level. Our Custom Boxing Gloves and Gear can bring to life any of your design ideas with a short production time. Let your imagination flow and create the perfect pair of boxing gloves. HKA, the official glove of Nevis' Fighting Alliance. Doctor checks out Tristan's eye. Looks like the cut is good to go. Julia's gonna come out, try to get that jab going again. He, he knows there's a little damage right there. He's gonna try to expose that. Cut to the gloves. I think Tristan might be a little bit tired. Oh, that right hook though was close. And, Ooh, yep. right hand found a home. Oh, another one. Body oh, shot, solid. nice knee to the body right there. Good takedown defense out of Julius. I have to say, I'm impressed. Knowing the, the, the pedigree of Tristan's grappling. Ooh, Good spins him right on there. the cage. Needs to get that forehead under Tristan's chin right there to drive him up again. And it looks like Julius has been looking more for a takedown attempt just to get some separation, not so much the takedown itself. And this is good because it's harder for him to get taken out unless Tristan does a switch immediately to a double leg, which is an effective move you can find sometimes. But if he ends up down on his back, I mean, that's a lot to overcome with Tristan. So right here when he's controlling it, he's winning according to the judges. Well. Uh, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think you're right. I, I think Julius wants to keep Tristan off him, and Tristan saw the end of that first round. That's the the key to, right there was get him on his get Julius on his back, and he's going to be in a dominant position the rest of the time. 
his grappling pedigree is, is, is probably too much for Julius, but Julius has done a great job of stopping the takedown, keeping the fight at his at his his pace and keeping it where he wants it. Nice little right hand right there, wow! And he used it to get double unders. He is, but I think what we, what we missed right there was Julius had Tristan's left hand hidden or locked up so he wasn't able to uh, to block those punches right there. Nice oh. body shot right there. And he gets he gets right back to those underhooks and he's fighting him on his way up. He's gonna look for another uh, another knee to the body and that every body shot takes a little bit out of him and Tristan's breathing out of his mouth so I wonder if he's he's pretty tired. Goes for a nice That's little the one throw thing you right gotta there. watch with the body locks is your foot position. And this is a problem, less than a minute. Let's see what Tristan can do. He's got more time to work than he did last round. Absolutely, he could he could win this fight right. He's got an arm triangle locked up, it looks like. Right here, Julius needs to keep that half guard locked up or he is in serious trouble. Because even right here, the shoulder pressure could cause a problem. Julius passed. 20 seconds left. Julius is yeah. doing a great job. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, he's got his back to the cage like you alluded to earlier. Tristan's gonna take his back right here, but I don't think there's enough time to really do anything. Yeah, this is a, a really good position for Tristan here. Gonna land some offense, but he's gonna run out of time. Yeah, end of the second round. Again, Jordan, I gotta give that round to Julius Walker. I gotta give that round to Julius Walker. I think he dominated. Two minutes and 30, you know, let's say two minutes and 15 seconds of that round. Two minutes of that round, you give one minute to Tristan. I I mean, it depends on how the judges look at it. Did they look at the first half or the second half? Tristan did land a couple big hooks off the beginning of the round, too. Julius landed some knees, showed some good control against the fence. The body lock was tough for Tristan to deal with, but he crossed his feet up and got hip tossed. He did. He did, and that... That's a big flashy move that plays a, plays on the judge's eyes. And as we've seen here, as we've seen, these judges might be watching a different fight. Out of the third and final round brought to you by HKUSA. Make sure you guys check out their booth. They purchased some rental tickets here tonight for their gift card, 100 and 150. This has been a good one. Third and final round. Arnold Missouri makes some noise. Touch of the glove. Final round for the championship. Tristan's coming out throwing some heat. Big right hand, but Julius knows he, you know, he knows he's gonna he's got his hands locked. That is not off. good. He's got an entire round to work right here. This is not good for Julius. He has got to get his back to that cage and try to get back up. And see, Tristan is tired, but his background is jujitsu, so he's this is where he's comfortable, and he knows where he can catch his breath and take his breaks. Watch him look to put that right or his left foot on the inside of Julius's right foot or right thigh, and try and roll into a mount. They're sweaty enough where he could slide through and do it. Yeah, but that's that's a factor right there. The sweat is, and you can see Julius. He's just trying to hold guard, control position. I think him and his corners feel confident that he has two rounds. And being on his back right now is not where he wants to be with two minutes left. But I think he's gonna try to minimize damage by just kind of going over hooks, holding the head down. And if he sees a chance to explode up, he's going to. Julius doing a great job of, of basically minimizing the damage as they say. Yep. You guys are right here in front of us. That's disgusting. Those body shots right there. Tristan needs to actually posture up and start landing some heavier shots. What I'd like to see is post off that chin. Post off that chin with that left hand and then come down with the big right. Good hammer fist there right in front of him. Yeah, us. but as you he he locks up that Kimura. He's going for he can get that Kimura sweep. I don't think he'll get that on him. No, he would need the butterfly hook, I think, here. Absolutely, he would. But you're not going to get that move on Tristan. No, he's too heavy on top. His yeah, base he's, is he's too, too heavy. Thick. He knows. He knows all of it. 
He's even got the underhook, and he's trying to come up and do the right thing, but the top pressure of Tristan is just too much. Julius is doing a good job of minimizing the damage. He's taking a couple shots. He's, he's losing this round. What he needs to do is get to his feet. Ooh, big up kick right there. That is not what you needed to do. He needs to turn back into him and try to get that guard back. Good job by Julius, got that half guard back. Less than 30 seconds left. Tristan's gonna need to empty the tank right here if he wants to win this fight. He did a great job of not giving up Mount because Tristan very well could have ended up there and really put it on to finish it. They got less than 10 seconds. This is gonna be an interesting one. As we go to the judges' scorecards, I give this fight, I give the third round clearly to Julius. Clearly to Julius. I think but I have to say, to I'm sorry, I give the third round to, uh, to Tristan, clearly to Tristan. But it depends on how they're gonna score this fight. Did, I, well, yeah, did one of the takedowns in the other two rounds steal the round for him? I don't, not, not for me, no. I think, I don't Ju think, I, think so Ju I think Julius won round one and two. But here's the thing, we have been wrong all night when it comes to judges' <laughs> scorecards. I'm never wrong, I just misspoke. <laughs> you know what, Jordan, you know who won? The fans. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the jam-packed house here at Arnold, Missouri. And these guys, I, I don't know, it's disgusting. Their blood is spattered all over <laughs> us. But credit to Tristan, as he slowed down, you know, if he would've got those takedowns in the earlier rounds, he would've had a lot more time to work. And even though he got tired, he pressured him up against the cage in the third round, got that takedown and ended up on top, which was why it was good for Julius to pressure him against the cage earlier in the fight, because Tristan was coming forward with heavy hooks. And as you bring your hands up to defend those heavy hooks, you leave your waist and legs open. And he was able to dive in, get his hands clasped and get him taken down. Yeah, and you know what? I don't know if Tristan was tired or if he's just like a mouth breather, because I don't think his pace really slowed up. His pressure didn't stop, he kept going forward, so I mean, I didn't show. I didn't see signs of him being tired, aside from his mouth just being open. But I think Julius Walker won that fight. But a hell of a showing by Tristan and Julius. Tristan's a tank. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of amateur championship MMA, we go the judges' scorecards. Judge Francis scores about 30-27 over him. Judge Stacy scores about 29-28, Walker. And Judge Carr scores about 29-28. For your winner by split decision, and new NFA Amateur Light Heavyweight Champion, Tristan! Wow! Wow, these... Jordan, I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. These judges are absolute garbage. <laughs> Derek Stacy was the only one who, who scored that fight correctly. Wow, I think you know, you know, you can only defend them so much. But I have, I have to say, the commission's going to need to go back and test these guys because they clearly are not watching the same fights we we're watching. A 30-27 in that fight was ridiculous. 30-27 was was absolutely ridiculous. Wow, that, I'm shocked the crowd saying it to you, 30-27, that was a joke. I mean, Tristan did a great job. Oh, dominant third round. Absolutely. Great. I just don't think he won the other two. No, not, not at all, not at all. Congratulations to him. I mean, that 10-1 and one is a great Tristan, record. Congratulations. Julius to Walker got screwed. Grind and battle, you guys both look forward right there. Including your amateur record at 10 and 1, grab the strap. Congratulations. How's it feel to be the NFA Light Heavyweight Champion? Yeah, it feels amazing. I did my first debut here and it kind of kind of went like that. I got split in the very first round. Came here in the end, so I don't know what I got, but I love this game for something. My friends, my mother, my mother, my friends, my But uh, <laughs> I'm done with the amateur. Come on, problem. Some money, and I know a promotion and the LFA that's going to be looking for some uh, 
for some talent coming up in the light heavyweight division. Congratulations. Anybody else that you'd like to thank here tonight? Uh, number one shout out is always my daughter right there. She's the most amazing girl in the world. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, your new and 